the way down to the outskirts of the red zone here for first and ten. Back to the ground. This time it's Chubb. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. Now second and five. In motion left is Beckham. And he'll get it here on the jet sweep. And they corral him just a couple yards shy of the end zone. It's a really nice 15-yard pickup, and now it's first and goal. Williams. Oh, he's going absolutely nowhere as he is hit behind the line. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. He's got exactly what you're looking for. The ability to not just diagnose a play and quickly, but to make a play as well. Nice job there tackling him for a loss. Now they'll throw it with Griffin. To the right side, here's Mayer. And he'll get blown up behind the line of scrimmage. Back at the six. They'll wind up losing a yard on the play. And now we've got a third and goal situation. To throw is RG3. Touchdown, Broncos! Nick Chubb from six yards away. And the Broncos are able to move back in front. Well, we know he has decent hands out of the backfield. That's the first time, Charles, they've targeted him in the passing game, and it pays dividends. And I love the design, too, because they kept him in the backfield, made the defense think run first before they swung him out of there. And you're right, with his hands, they might want to throw it to him just a little bit more. Lux with the extra point. And the lead is now 10 to 7. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This fielded right at the goal line. And he is out of bounds as they'll start up past the 30. The Bucks offense set to begin their next possession. On first down, it's Locke. Throw complete right side to Colts. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. First down yardage on the first play of the drive. Give him 14. But he's turning in a nice performance. Remember, he had the touchdown earlier, and this time he's able to beat double coverage to grab it. I think that if he weren't worried about a taunting penalty, he'd run by the opposing team's bench and say, guys, Two's not going to be enough. You better get some more guys trying to cover me. He knows how to get open downfield. This duo locked in 14 yards there and a first down. Well, he's been a busy man in this first half. They've targeted him quite a bit, including both plays here to start this drive. And until that defense starts reacting a little better, they may just keep going back to him. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. They run with Jackson out of the gun. And he'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. That good for 22 and a first down. Would you say this offense is locked in right now? They're having no trouble on this drive. What is it, three plays, three first downs? Yeah, you talk about on the march. They keep this up, they get to that end zone real fast. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. They'll get six on the play, and it's going to take us to the two-minute warning. Here now, second and four. Here's Locke. Right side caught by Jackson. And in for the Buccaneers touchdown. 
13-yard touchdown. And the Bucs have taken the lead. A CD, you know he's got great options at wide receiver tight end, but there he looks to the backfield, and it results in a touchdown. I love how you laid that out. So many options. You made me forget about some of the ones that you should be covering, and they made them pay with that one, didn't they? You forget about the guys in the backfield. They're eligible, too. Extra point from McManus is good, and the lead is now 14-10. to 10. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. And they're going to have really good starting field position here as that's taken up close to the 40. The Broncos onto the field ready to start their next drive. And now last drive, so successful with the ground game, ending in a touchdown. Do you stick with that formula? That would be the number one thing you would think of, but so many guys now would look at it and say, we've got them set up so well for play action, now's the time to take a shot. Yeah. But, you know, there was a big-time coach in the state of Ohio who once said, if you throw the ball, if you put it in the air, three things can happen, and two of them are bad. He would have kissed it on the ground. <laughs> He's got his first catch here before halftime, and it goes for a first down. We didn't need to ask around the league, but we got to confirm this guy's a good player. They've got to find a way to get him more involved, call a few more plays that target him. Absolutely, because here we are toward the end of the first half, and that's the first target, not just the first catch, first target. And he'll bring this one inside the 35. Off the play fake, here's Griffin. Crossing the field, Beckham makes a catch. And he's taken down, but not before reaching the 10-yard line. So it's first and goal and a great opportunity to get that lead back before the break. They'll run with Chubb. And this play doesn't go anywhere. Backwards, losing yardage to the 11. The Broncos in their hurry up, try to get to their positions and get set quickly. Now the Bucs going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with a little over 30 seconds to go in the first half of play. They'll try again with Chubb. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. Now the Broncos are going to call the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with 27 seconds remaining here in the second quarter. A big play forthcoming. Here's third and goal. And again, it's Chubb. And he will take it in for a Bronco touchdown. Nick Chubb with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Broncos will take the lead here in the final minute of the first half. That could be an important swing right there, a touchdown of the final minute of the half to take the lead. And I like the point you just made there. Could be an important swing because now that they have the lead, if they can carry that into the locker room in the half, they'll feel really good about what they accomplished in the first two quarters. That's good on the extra point. And it's now 17-14. The Broncos kickoff unit out there to kick this one away. And he'll elect not to run with it. And a fair catch on the kickoff will move the ball to the 25. The Tampa offense ready to get their drive started. 
And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. This is caught. It's Cooks. The Bucks going to go ahead and use the second of their timeouts as they stop it with 19 seconds to go in half number one. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and ten. Back to throw. Love. There again is Cooks complete. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. Back-to-back -back receptions for him, and it's another first down. And we're going to get a timeout with two seconds remaining in the second quarter. So with two ticks left here in the half, on is the field goal unit. And now we'll get a late timeout as it comes in the waning moments of quarter number two. So even though it's first down, here's the field goal unit on now to try to get three before halftime. On the left hash, this from 48 yards. And McManus had a little too much slice on it. It's no good. First half in the books. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Charles and I settled into the booth, ready for quarter number three. A field goal, the difference. 17-14 is the score. Back underway here now in this third quarter. And that one will bounce out of the back of the end zone, so we will start here at the 25. offense set to begin their next possession. This offense, Charles, had a strong first half throwing the football, at least in terms of yardage, but that hasn't translated so far on the scoreboard as they begin the third quarter here trailing and looking for a little momentum. Yeah, you're right about that because, you know, let's face it, in the first half, most of their focus was in the passing game, and to their credit, resulted in a healthy amount of yardage. So I would think that at halftime, they're going to anticipate that defense loosening up a little bit to try and cover the passing lanes. They've got to get the running game going, and there should be some gaps to run through now. 46 yards rushing for him now on just six carries to this point. Second and inches is oftentimes an invitation for an offense coordinator to take a big shot downfield because he feels like he can come back on third down and pick up the first down. But sometimes you just have a big tendency. Stay with what you are, stay with who you know, and go get the first down. That's exactly what they did. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. Ball right on the 50-yard line. Here's second and three. From the 50, it's locked. Just his second catch of the game so far. This one moves the chains. Up the middle they go with a big bank, Jackson. He'll get this down to the 38. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. Second down and six now. Now it's locked. 
He finds Hopkins complete. And this is going to be another first down as they'll make the tackle at the Broncos' 22-yard line. Just his second catch of the game so far. This one moves the chains. I love the drive they're working on here because they know they can take the lead with a touchdown. And so far on this drive, so good. They moved the ball down the field with very little resistance defensively. But they better be prepared for some adjustments to come their way now. Inside, it's Jackson, and he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually you have the defense back on its heels. Here's Locke. To the left side, there's Mayer. And able to get this down inside the 15, either the 13 or 14 before he's out of bounds. The result, only four yards there on the play. And now that sets up third and two. They'll come to the line, needing only two yards to gain the first here. On third down, here's Bo. And he's into the end zone for a Tampa Bay touchdown. A great effort there with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Bucs have taken the lead as they go right down the field and score on the opening drive of the second half. McManus now for the extra point. It's up and good to make it 21-17. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. And solid field position here to start as they get this out to the 40-yard line. With all the specialization we have in this great game, at some point, the head coach is going to take charge of every group. And I think at halftime, he spent a little time with the special teams coach that, look, you've got to find a way to get us a big play to help us get back into this. Denver offense at the line, ready to go. Well, Charles, in that first half, we saw a fair amount of offense on both sides of the football, and now the team trailing here will start with it in the third quarter. And we both know this coach pretty darn well, don't we? Because his game planning is always on point. And now that he's getting the ball to start the second half, how about all the offense that you already referenced in the first half? He'll put that all together, come out with something really strong, I believe, to get things going here in the third quarter. They try to throw on second down, but this one is incomplete. Just work with me a second here, because in my lifetime, seeing how quarterback percentages have changed in throwing the football, I mean, back in the good old days, if you were around 50%, you were doing okay. But now, you need to be 65 to 70% to be considered an elite quarterback. And in this ball game, I feel like we're playing old school. Well, we're not 50%. Yeah, he's under 50%. He needs to start hitting more targets. First down, they'll run with Chubb. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. And they're going to hurry back to the line now. On second down, Griffin. And this will be well too low for him to bring in. It's incomplete. He released that awkwardly. It almost looked like a pitcher who gripped his fastball a little too hard and let it go late and it bounced in front of the plate. Yeah, one of those fastballs that ends up at 57 feet, not 60 feet, 6 inches. Just a little short with the arm, which is unusual because we saw him in warm-ups. He's got a big, strong arm when he delivers it with confidence. After the incompletion, here now, third and two. Not liking the look, they'll change the play. Well, everybody was up there ready at the line of scrimmage, CD, but no snap, and the delay of game ensued. Yeah, and I'm sure their head coach is asking the exact same thing. What's going on out there? Almost like they thought they had more time than actually was on the clock.
Not ideal there. That delay of game backs him up five yards, so now they need seven yards on third down. They go play action with Griffin. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. Partner, what we're seeing so far is the defense is certainly coordinated. Both levels doing their jobs in tandem. The back helping the front, the front helping the back. The pressure got home on that last play and forced him to try and throw through contact and short of the sticks. The kick by Watts is good. And that'll bring him back within a point. They're certainly happy they were able to force the fumble, Charles, but wish they would have gotten in the end zone, only getting three points there and still facing the second half deficit. And they also will understand it's going to be a whole lot tougher to force another turnover the rest of the game because that offense, they're going to be all about ball security from here on out. This taken in at the goal line. And he's going to get this across the 20 as he's out of bounds at the 23. The Tampa offense ready to get their drive started. We've got a close game. The offense has played well, but right now, they've got to keep their foot on the gas. And that carries with it an extra bit of pressure, doesn't it? As much fun as they're having right now, they're locked in, really clicking on all cylinders. They also know that if they ever miss a chance to put points on the board, they've actually put their team in jeopardy. And that's not how you want to play the game. It's supposed to be complimentary football, offense, defense. But today, it's all offense for them. Yeah, they've been playing with a sense of urgency. It's probably going to need to continue. On second and 10, Locke. Trying to force it to Hopkins, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Jalen Ramsey. And he's going to get this one to the 23-yard line. Well, certainly not his best throw that time, and not a good time to make it, Charles, when they were a nickel with five defensive backs on the field. And that's exactly why you have those five DBs out there. You want extra speed on the field, guys who have ball skills and understand what the passing game can do, and gives them a chance to react and make a play on the football, and they take one of those away. After the interception, here's Griffin. Got it to Bell on the out route. That'll go for a gain of seven, and it's second down. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. You are watching Madden Ultimate Team on EA Sports. Here's second and three. From the gun, it's a run for Williams. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, hard to get them started again occasionally. The offense on third down, they've converted four times out of six. Not bad. This time they face a third and two. Now the Broncos are going to call the first of their timeouts. That'll leave them with two remaining. We'll be back after this. Two yards still to go. Third down now. Griffin. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And the Broncos are going to have first and goal as they try to finish off this drive with six points. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and we watch them drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed, too. And the question now, how do they want to work the clock here on first and goal? A field goal would give them the late lead. They'll send a receiver here in motion right. 
Oh, this one it may need to go back to the drawing board. He's going to be swallowed up right away. It's a loss of a yard there, and it's second down. Well, as a wide out, when you take that handoff and you're coming around the edge, you're expecting to see nothing but empty space in front of you. But if not... Well, things can go south in a hurry, and that's exactly what we saw on that play with a loss. Now from the seven, here's second and goal. Here's Griffin to throw. Going out wide, finds Chubb. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. A touchdown saving tackle there. Now it's third and goal. I know it was a gain, but you have to sense probably a little bit of disappointment there because when it's out there in open space, I think they expect to get more out of a play, don't you? Especially when you're getting it to your guy out of the backfield. You're expecting him to be able to create something to be a little more shifty. Yeah, no doubt about it. Good open field tackle and held it to an okay game. They lost two, and it brings up fourth. And I don't think there should be much of a discussion here, but you know how I am. You kick the football, you take the lead. How bold do you want to be in this situation, though? The kick by Watts is good, and they have taken the lead here in the fourth quarter. So the drive here ends with a field goal. It does give them the lead, but this one's still certainly a long way from over. It definitely puts a lot of pressure on your defense to hold the lead, right? They're happy to have it and happy to be out there trying to do so. But I know as a former player, in the back of their mind, they're thinking, why don't you score the touchdown and seal this thing? The return man down to a knee, and this will come out to the 25-yard line. The Bucks' offense set to begin their next possession. And they really need to forget about their last time out, the turnover that led to a field goal. So now they try to regroup, trailing in the final quarter. Obviously, they'd love a touchdown, but three would suffice. 83 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. Maybe a good spot to take a shot. Here's second and a yard from the 34. They run again with Jackson. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. Second and one, and people want to run the football. This is where every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there. Pick up the first down. All three timeouts plus the two-minute warning. Here's first and ten. Here's Locke. The hook up on the right side to Hopkins. Well, this will be good for a pickup of nine to the 46. Two minutes remain, and that's our score differential as well. Two points here in the fourth quarter. Here's second and a yard. Now Locke. This one complete to his fullback out of the backfield. And he's going to get out of bounds with the first. And they are knocking on the door of field goal range now. Well, they got the yardage they needed there. Picked up the first down, got out of bounds. How about the urgency that they have, as well as the understanding where they are on the field. Here's first down. Now again, it's Jackson. That's a really nice, tough run inside. And they gained five yards on it. And to be frank about it, most offenses don't expect to get five yards on a play call like that. So when they do, they go back to their home with a little pep in their steps. They're starting to think that they're starting to dominate the line of scrimmage. Now still maybe want to think about letting that play clock run a little here. It's second down. Luck now to throw. Oh, and that's going to sabotage their comeback plans. It is intercepted. Picked off by the free safety, Eric Berry. And he takes this one back into the end zone. And a Broncos defense.